Apex Legends is a very good game. I very much enjoyed it when it first released earlier this year. I can't say I've kept up with it because it's yet another live service game that requires constant attention to stay competitive and, well, I just don't have time for that. There are so many live services on the market, all of them expecting to become someone's part-time job, and I'm simply too busy playing Resident Evil 4 for the 30th time. If I take an extended break from that, I can pick it back up and not be completely out of the loop. But regardless, as much as I enjoyed the game, I never much cared for its monetization. The skins it sold on its storefront were overpriced for what they were, and on top of that, the game offered premium loot boxes as well, which just completely turns me off from ever wanting to support any game. Sorry, did I say loot boxes? This is an electronic arts game, I meant surprise mechanics! And while Respawn is said to have developed the game largely without EA's input, the detestable slime ball of a publisher's influence is certainly felt in Apex's new Iron Crown event. You see, it's not enough for Apex Legends to sell overpriced skins and to sell loot boxes, it's jumped on board the Battle Pass train as well. The Iron Crown Collection event behaves as a sort of little battle pass within Season 2 of Apex Legends, which itself serves as a premium battle pass. Now, the Iron Crown event has a lot going on in it, with 12 epic items, 12 legendary items, a new form of currency, a whole new store, a new type of loot box, new challenges, and a solos mode. Now, there are 24 epic and legendary items combined, and they've been squirreled away into individual loot boxes, only two of which you can unlock by completing challenges in the game. So if you want every single epic and legendary item on offer here, you have to buy those loot boxes at $7 a pop and spend a cumulative $160. Now, of course, not everybody wants every single item for every single character, but to further incentivize collecting everything, Apex offers an heirloom item, which is the super duper rare thing, an heirloom axe for Bloodhound, which can only be purchased with premium currency after you get everything else, which amounts to an extra 10 bucks on top, which means that if you want that heirloom axe, then you're spending $170 in total. And that's the key takeaway here, you're expected to spend a cumulative $170 worth. And here's where the insidious nature of microtransactions comes into play, because this has been designed in order to obscure the fact that getting everything costs $170. $170 written out as a lump sum looks completely egregious, because it is completely egregious. But that amount separated out into to individual smaller purchases is designed to get people spending without thinking about exactly how much they're spending. Of course, this only works on someone who doesn't think $7 for a loot box isn't fucking absurd to begin with, but impulsiveness crossed with the haves and have-nots economy of cosmetic microtransactions is surely gonna coax a lot of money out of a lot of people. That's what microtransactions are designed to do, they're designed to trick people into spending more money than they know they're spending. There's a reason why community members and reporters have to tot up the figures on their own to present the lump sum to the general public. Because Respawn and Electronic Arts do not want you to think about exactly how much money you're spending, that might make you a bit more hesitant to spend it. I mean, I understand wanting to support a free-to-play game by spending on some of the microtransactions, but a convoluted route to getting an item for $170, coupled with the existing storefront and battle pass and loot boxes, well, it all starts to look a little bit unreasonable, doesn't it? But the convolution, the degrees of separation between your money and the items you're buying, the deliberate obfuscating nature of microtransactions and loot boxes, it all works. That's the manipulative nature of it all, it works. There was that story from last year about a FIFA player who got EA to release information for him via the GDPR and found out that cumulatively, over two years he had managed to spend over $10,000 on FIFA. $10,000 on a football game, that shouldn't even be possible. Not even across every single FIFA game that's ever been made, it shouldn't be possible. But the data reflected money spent on FIFA 17 and FIFA 18. Now the player in question had enough disposable income to not think about these purchases as they were being made, but once he found out the total figure he was, and I quote, 
gobsmacked. Because that's how microtransactions work, that's how loot boxes work, that's how they're designed to work. Now, Electronic Arts can make up new words for loot boxes and tell everyone that people find them fun. They're ethical because people enjoy them, they're fun. But they never mention the sinister intentions behind them. That while people are having fun with their surprise mechanics, they're also being fucking conned. They're being tricked. Apex Legends is far, 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 far from the only free-to-play game with obscene prices for items parceled out into smaller increments purchases. And some people have tried to defend Apex Legends, I guess because they like that particular game, by saying other games do it as well. By saying there are free-to-play games on mobile that are even worse, even more egregious, and yes, that's true. But that doesn't give Apex Legends a free pass. And considering these free-to-play games love to sell their own passes, they should appreciate not getting a free one. Shitty economies being in other games does not excuse a shitty economy being in Apex Legends. There they're all shitty economies, and loot boxes in particular should fuck off and die wherever they're being sold. In any case, Apex Legends demonstrates the insidious nature of microtransactions and in-game gambling mechanics. And it's worth keeping an eye on Apex Legends because it is an EA published game, and EA is always trying to push the envelope, always feeling out the situation, always trying to find a way to get more and more aggressive with its monetization. Now that EA has a bona fide battle royale hit on its hands, it can experiment with Fortnite's successful business model. So it's going to see what it can get away with, with timed events that have limited time offers. It'll see just how over the top it can make a la carte purchases on its store. It's going to see what it can get away with in terms of battle passes. And since loot boxes are already an established part of Apex Legends' economy, Electronic Arts is free to fiddle around with in-game gambling to its heart's content, within the confines of a first-person shooter to see what it might be able to get away with in future games as well, ones that might not necessarily be free to play. And as we've seen with Star Wars Battlefront 2, Electronic Arts is very interested in turning absolutely every element of a game into a premium transaction. So yes, Apex Legends and its $170 axe, which by the way, PC Gamer notes is a figure that factors in discounts on Apex coins, the Blood Axe as a standalone would cost $35 on its own. I was 10 seconds away from uploading this video video from finishing the upload when I said to myself, you know what Jim, I bet you said Blood Axe at some point in this video and I went back and listened and yep, the, the axe is called Raven's Bite, but for some reason I keep wanting to call it a Blood Axe, but it's called Raven's Bite, I'm just adding this bit now so, so, because commenters will say, you called it a Blood Axe, you called it a Blood Axe, yeah I did. But anyway, Apex Legends definitely demonstrates the insidious nature of microtransactions. And I don't think being free in the first place justifies the ridiculous amounts of money people are expected to spend. Sure, I understand supporting a game with microtransactions, but if any of this shit was priced reasonably, they wouldn't have to hide the total cost behind incremental purchases. I don't know if any of you you have like picked up on this at all, but me, your old pal Jim Sterling, I'm not a big fan of microtransactions, if I'm being completely honest.